السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters the aim that we have is to earn paradise if you're a believer that's what it should be so if you have a connection with Allah Almighty you would know that you are on this earth just for a few years in order to prepare for the eternal life. One might ask why? The true answer is Allah knows best. But we see and we witness every single day people being born and people dying. We see people being born and mashallah there is excitement upon their birth and we see people dying and there is sadness upon their death in the case of most people <laughs> subhanallah the reason i say that is when there's an evil person and he dies everyone says mashallah alhamdulillah did you hear the guy actually died you know let's hope we're not from among those my brothers and my sisters so we see it happening and we are the most sophisticated of the creatures of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of what is known as posture and even the brain the understanding Allah Almighty says, لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We have created man in the best of postures. Ahsan means the best. If Allah is saying the best, He's challenging you that there is none better than this. Do you think of any other creature of Allah better posture than ours? I've always said, and I'm sure you've heard it, where your ears are, where your eyes are, where your nose is, where your mouth is, your tongue, where your fingers are, where your nails are. Can you ever think of a better place to put those organs? The answer is no. No one has and no one shall. It's absolutely superb the way Allah has made. Subhanallah. So we see that we're so sophisticated today. I'm in this beautiful, beautiful town. It's a town, right? town of Keithley and I tell you it's so amazing as we are meandering coming to to this particular place from where I was up north in Blackburn I can say something some of these roads are so narrow yet so beautiful that you know what they delay us so may Allah grant us ease we had a, we had a vehicle in front of us at a slow pace and we couldn't really navigate and we had to wait for a certain place in order to overtake that particular car but for me it was so beautiful because I was witnessing all the fields and the beautiful greenery and thinking to myself imagine Jannah and how it would be no comparison no comparison but still we say subhanallah whenever we see nice things subhanallah alhamdulillah mashallah tabarakallah isn't it so Allah Almighty has given us a brain to look at this the eyes with the brain together. We look at this. We appreciate it. I want to spend more time. You know, I want to stop. I want to go and visit these fields. I want to see the horses. We saw some swans and ducks as we were coming across. And I see such lovely, beautiful brothers and sisters and amazing. We'd like to talk to you. I'd like to spend more time with you. I'd like to greet you. I'd like to know you better. But I'm a human being on earth. I, I can't really do that. I can't really do that. Why? Time is never on our side. I'm glad that I met you today, even from a distance. I'm so happy. You're my brother. You're my sister. But at the same time, the world has limitations. Now, the question is, do you really think, do you really think that as sophisticated as we are, we will just suddenly come to an end without being able to fulfill what we wanted to fulfill, even if it was beyond the point of what we know as death. I don't believe that. I believe Allah will give us the opportunity to meet again under better circumstances when we can actually sit and get acquainted with each other, when we can actually have such time that there will no longer be need to worry about it because it won't exist anymore. It's timeless. So Allah says, Oh man, we have created you in a certain way. 
so sophisticated in order that you worship us and you do the right thing. You have a brain to understand right from wrong guided by revelation. You see, the mind is such that it is very sophisticated. However you fill it, it will be filled. So if you fill the mind with that which is not beneficial, it will give you back that which is not beneficial. If you fill the mind with that which is detrimental, it will give you back that which is detrimental. If you are from an early age and stage going to learn the wrong things, the seeds that you sow at the time will reap fruit that will be harmful for you. If someone taught you when you were little that one plus one is three and they looked at you and showed you two fingers and said this is three and you kept on saying one plus one is three and you showed them two fingers, you are confused. The person who taught you is confused and up to the time you die or up to the time someone else corrects you, you might grow up believing one plus one is three yet you're showing two fingers. So what you are confused by is the figure two and three you've mixed them up that's what it is why because you were taught wrong from the very beginning let me give you another example when you're learning the Quran if your teacher does not know you're not going to know beyond your teacher and if your teacher is wanting to fiddle with your mind he's going to teach you wrong Alif is Ba and Ba is Alif and Ta is Tha and Tha is Ta and what happens to you you grow up being able to read but you're reading so wrong Whose fault is it? It's the fault of the system that taught you absolutely wrong. But you grew up believing firmly that you are right. That's the problem. Allah says we've given you a mind if it is guided by revelation and you use it within that guidance, you will definitely come to the most content life on earth. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, go around looking and searching. I've done it. The happiest and most content people on earth are those whose faith is strong. They control themselves. They don't just do what they want. They are disciplined. They speak in a, in a certain way. They carry themselves in a certain way. They connect with their maker, knowing that I'm made by a maker and I'm going to go back to that maker. And so they have lovely days when they suffer a loss. They are patient knowing that we're going to earn a reward from Allah. And when they earn something and when they, when they have a profit and something good happens to them, they, they are happy within a limit and they thank Allah without becoming arrogant and proud, knowing that the gratitude belongs to the one who gave me the owner of everything. And at the same time, he could take it away any minute. May Allah grant us goodness. So these are very, very deep thoughts and very beautiful teachings that if we were to ponder over them, they would make us better Muslims. And when you're a better Muslim, wallahi, you become a more content person. The minute you run behind that, which you are not supposed to be running behind, Allah Almighty tells you, you know what? You're going to lose firstly your contentment on earth. Now one might ask, well, I've seen people who don't believe in Allah and they're quite content. Well, Allah Almighty tells you that, you know what? They might be happy. They might be happy because we have chosen to reward them in this world for the good they may have done because there are a lot of people who don't have faith but have done a lot of good. What about those who don't have faith, who don't lie and they don't have faith, they don't deceive. They don't have faith, but they help the poor. They don't have faith, but they, they reach out to relatives and to others and they, they are kind hearted and they are great. There are so many of those on earth. What does Allah says? Allah says, we don't oppress them. We will give them their goodness on earth. We will give them a happy home, a happy family, comfortable. They will enjoy the holidays. They will go here and there. They will have a lot of fun and whatever else they may be. If they don't believe in the hereafter at all, Allah says, what portion do you want us to give them from the hereafter? That's between them and Allah. And Allah Almighty already says, that if they don't want to believe in it, I may not want to give it to them. It's up to Allah. So Allah doesn't oppress people say, Oh, I know of someone who's really kind. I say, I know of Allah who's even kinder. Allah doesn't oppress. If you did good, he will give you good in this world. You believed in this world alone. What are you going to get it in this world? You believe in the hereafter. Allah says from among those who believe in the hereafter in order to get what's in the hereafter, you have to set the exam. Do you know how powerful that is? It is as powerful as or even more powerful than the example of a person who is tested only when he enrolls for that particular course. How can I just pick you up from this masjid today and say, hey guys, come here. 
I have an examination you want to, you need to write. Say, but I'm, I haven't enrolled for the course. I'm, I don't belong to the school. And no, no, you have to write it. But for what? That's what you're going to say, right? But the minute you enroll and you want a qualification for something, what's going to have to happen? You're going to have to learn. You're going to have to study. You're going to have to sweat. You're going to have to have a little sense of anxiety, perhaps slightly, you know, because, hey, I have an exam tomorrow. Please make dua. I'm going to go and so on. You're going to sit the exam and you're going to be questioned and you might fail and you might pass the second time. And what might happen? You might pass the first time and get good results. Allah says, well, you've enrolled into something known as submission unto Allah because you want a certificate that's going to earn you paradise. And therefore, you're going to have to go through a, a bit of an examination. What is it? Well, we're going to test you. So in Surah Baqarah, Allah says what the test is. Allah says we will test all of you, every one of you with a little bit of fear. I spoke about anxiety a moment ago, a minute ago. I tell you a little bit of fear has to come in your life somewhere. Uncertainty, trust Allah, trust Allah. What are you going through right now? Challenges, I just lost my job. I've just been diagnosed with this, with that. Trust Allah, trust him. Do your best as a human. Beyond that, you can't do. Don't worry beyond your capacity. Some people are worried. What's going to happen if my father dies? What's going to happen if I do, if this happens to me? What if I have cancer and I don't know? All those what ifs are now from shaitan. You are worrying beyond your capacity. You have to try your best and leave the rest in the hands of Allah. If you are not prepared to leave things in the hands of Allah and engage in what is known as trusting Allah, you're going to struggle because not because you deserve to struggle, but because you didn't understand what Allah told you. Allah says we will never ever burden a soul beyond what they can shoulder. But you have burdened yourself beyond what Allah burdened you by. Allah told you, worry about yourself. Do the best according to the capacity we've given you. You're worried about your whole family and community. Not in a good way, in a bad way. What's the difference? A good way is, I hear about someone who's unwell. I take out some money. I go to visit them. I make a dua. I try to help them. That's in a good way. A bad way is, you start thinking of things that are not existing and worrying about what if they start happening. Imagine I walked into this masjid and everyone died because of some gas attack. Astaghfirullah. I mean, why would my mind ever even go there? For what? But if you're a worry pot and you want your mind to go to places that it's not supposed to go to, the probabilities are endless. You're going to struggle and suffer. Allah says, you're a believer. We make it easy for you. Be content by handing things over to us. We promise you the first thing we're going to test you by is a little bit of fear. You're going to have a bit of anxiety, a little bit of uncertainty. The answer to that particular test is to lay your trust in Allah. What capacity has Allah given you? Whatever he has given you, use it to its extent and then say, Oh Allah, I did whatever I could. I trust you. Done. Then if something good happens, you praise him. And if something bad happens, you bear patience and Allah will reward you. So now let's go to the next thing Allah says he's going to test you by. Jua, a little bit of hunger, hunger, hunger in so many different ways. You might be living in such a lovely country where you can afford it. Some people cannot afford the next meal. But sometimes you are wealthy, but you can't eat because of some health condition. Sometimes there's beautiful food, but you look at it and you say, you know what? I can't have it. Why? I eat gluten free. You heard that. Some can't have it because you know what? I'm going to die it. You know, what's a diet. You got to die. Half your death is there because you look at such lovely things and you're like almost dead that you can't eat it. Okay. Sometimes you get used to it. You enjoy it. Say, you know what? Haven't had sugar in ages. My man, you don't know what you're missing out on. And then they come about with a lame thing. I'm sweet enough. Oh, wow. Mashallah. I heard that before. In fact, I've used that line too. May Allah sweeten us. I mean, without sugar, by the way. But my, my brothers and my sisters, it's just a test. Allah says we'll test you with hunger. There might be times when what you're accustomed to is not there. Look, recently, didn't we not have some of the fruits and veggies we were accustomed to? And the shelves were somewhat empty for whatever political or non-political reason. But the, 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 the reality is, weren't the, some of the shelves empty? You could have had a stash of pounds, but you were unable to purchase 
The reason was it wasn't there. Isn't that a test? Are you going to get angry, make a tantrum, start punching people up or at least punch the wall and hurt yourself and whatever? It won't help you. Allah says, bear patience. Be patient. It won't come. You're used to this fresh food, beautiful, fresh beetroot with pomegranate every morning, mashallah. Come to Africa, by the way. It grows in our yard. And you're used to this lovely and one day it's not there. Where is my juice? Relax, man. People don't even have water. And you're fighting about something that's a luxury. No, but my health, my diet. Forget your diet for a day. Just bear patience. Say, oh Allah, I really want it, but it's okay, it's not there. I'm still going to get up for Fajr. I'm still going to connect with you. I'm still going to thank you. It's okay. And I come from Africa. Let me tell you, at times, and this is not about food, it's about something else. Every single day, electricity just goes off. When you need it the most right now it's winter back in south africa if you might have seen snowing snowing for the first time in some of those places in history and we don't have the heaters like you have here and then the electricity is gone and everyone's goo, 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 freezing right it's a test from allah it's a luxury. You can use a blanket or two or three. That's what the people have been doing all along. But because we're accustomed to heaters and underflooring and whatever they call it, under underfloor heating and something else and so on, we become so, so depressed because you know what? I can't. You can just adjust a little bit. Allah says, we will test you. That's another test. Khawf, jur, naqsim min al amwal. Allah says, we have to test you because you've enrolled for the hereafter. One of the tests is we will make you suffer a loss. Amwal, you're going to lose some money, some wealth. So either someone stole from you, either it was a bad deal, either you lost a job, either you're in debt for some reason. I hope it's for the right reasons because debt is one of the worst things you could get yourself into. May Allah help us all get out of our debts. I mean, so Allah says you have to suffer a loss. Sometimes in business, you're a multi-millionaire, but one day the whole business burns down. Thank Allah. Oh Allah, for 40 years, I afforded everything. Today, you took my whole business away. Help me so that when I start afresh tonight, it will grow bigger than what it was yesterday before it was burnt. Is that your condition? If it is, Allah says you've just passed your test with flying colors. And you know what? We will replenish what we took from you beyond what you had. That's Allah. It's not easy. It's not easy. Ask those who lose a hundred pounds. They have a sleepless night. Depending on how much you have, obviously. But ask those who've lost something. They really are struggling. I lost this guy actually stole three grand from me. Yes, you can pursue it. You can achieve justice, but don't become depressed because of that. Trust Allah. Allah knows he planned it for you before you were born. He knew it was going to come in your direction. He just wants to watch. What's your reaction and what are you going to do? That's Allah. So Allah promises you in Surah Al-Baqarah, the beginning of the Quran, it's a second Surah. And Allah says, we're going to test every single one of you with these things. Your examination questions are already told to you. It's going to happen to you. You're going to get sick someday. Anyway, Allah says, Naqsim min al-amwal, loss, loss in terms of wealth, well, anfus, loss in terms of life. Allah says, someone's going to die around you whom you love. It has to happen. Or you're going to die. Subhanallah. Have you lost a loved one? Many will say, yes, how does it feel? It was the most difficult thing. I tell you when you've lost a child, that's probably one of the most difficult, difficult times of your life. Something that is very challenging, extremely difficult. Allah knows. Allah knows. A few days ago, I was sitting at someone's house who lost a child. They had a child after a long time. And then when the child was about a month old, perhaps 29 days old on the day of Eid, the child suddenly stopped breathing and passed away within five minutes. Sitting with them, do you know what I said? I said, the reason why I know that Allah loves you is because he chooses those whom he wants to go through bigger challenges and bigger tests. And he chose Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to go through exactly what you guys have just gone through. Some of those who are close to Allah would actually look at you and say, I wish this happened to me. Allahu Akbar. Sounds silly, right? The reason would be if it happened to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and now it's happening to you. Allah chose him. Allah's choosing you. It's going to require a huge bag of patience. And Allah chooses you to engage in that act of worship. Patience is an act of worship that Allah chooses you to go to engage in to whatever degree he loves you. And I'm going to prove that to you with the rest of this verse that I was reading. 
So may Allah make it easy. You've lost a child, one of the most difficult things, but you've lost a parent. It's also extremely difficult. Let me explain. If you've lost a parent and you're an orphan, Allah loves you more than Allah loves the others. The simple reason he did it for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Again, look at how you've been chosen for the same test. And that's why if you're an orphan, good news for you is that your success and failure does not depend on whether or not you've had a parent. But it depends on many other factors and a whole host of factors. Because Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most successful ever, his father passed away before he was born. His mother died while he was a little child. You see? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But we know most noble, chosen by Allah as the most noble of all messengers, the most, the greatest of all creation, according to our belief. My brothers, my sisters, Allah will test you. Don't be despondent. Life, we didn't come here to just enjoy every day. Whether you believe or you don't believe, you're still going to be tested. When you believe, the tests become easier because you have conviction and faith and you rely on Allah and you believe in Him and you know that you're going to be given something in return and in lieu of your struggles and your sufferings. So Allah says, Naqsim min al amwal wa anfus. Anfus meaning death will happen around you. You're going to lose people around you. Prepare for the day. If it hasn't happened, but, but, Importantly, don't become anxious or worried by the thought of something that hasn't happened. Oh, today we were told I'm going to lose my loved one. So now what if I lose my brother? What if I lose my sister? What if I, that what if is the door of the devil? Allah says, don't go and say if, if and study probabilities because that's the door of the devil. It opens the door of shaitan. That's what Allah says. So if anyone's going to study probabilities and possibilities of negative things that could have or should have or will or might happen, then you've got a problem. Strengthen your faith in Allah. Rely on Allah. It's okay. The day it happens, there we are. The day I see symptoms, I will try and help and deal. If it happened beyond my control, I will either bear patience or if it was a good thing, I will thank Allah for it. That's a mu'min. That's a believer. You'll enjoy your life. Even if you don't have anything, you'll enjoy every day of it. You get up and you pray and you realize, you know what? I got up and prayed because my Lord invited me to do that. Wow. My Lord invited me. Have you heard the invitation? You're going to hear it just now when the Muaddin calls it. It's an invitation. Hayya. What does Hayya mean? What does Hayya mean? Come. Is come not an invitation? Come to what? Come to prayer. Who's inviting you? Allah. Invitation. If we had a dinner this evening and you guys were invited, wouldn't you be excited? I would be because I get a bit more time with you guys. That's a basic thing. Invited to a dinner, get excited. I'm invited to paradise and I'm not excited. Don't even get up for Fajr. Come on, guys. We do better, inshallah. I challenge you guys and myself as well. We need to strengthen ourselves. Get up a little bit earlier, inshallah, because you respond to the invite of the Lord of the worlds. I've always said tahajjud is a prayer that's not compulsory, but it's by invite only. Allah invites you to it. That's it. You're not invited. You're going to be sleeping. Allah chooses his worshippers whom he wants to get up before Fajr. Allah chooses. So you, you and you like you to come and then you end up getting up. You end up making wudu and you come and you don't realize that was your Lord's love that wanted you to fulfill something not compulsory out of love. Consider yourself fortunate. You got up for tahajjud. Wow. That's a sign now that there is a deep connection between you and Allah. There goes. I hope that's motivation enough to wake us up, at least for Fajr. I always get tears in my eyes when I think of tahajjud. We're all weak. Don't think that I'm sitting here in front of you, so I must be making tahajjud every day. No, I didn't. Not even today. But it's not like I don't ever do it. I don't need you to know, but all I need you to know is I'm just a human like you. It's not like I, I, I fulfill it every day. No, I don't. In fact, I'm not even regular with it. May Allah make us regular. It's not far up. I had to clarify that because people look at you and they start thinking, this guy must be so holy. Yeah, there are a few holes that we do have. Alhamdulillah. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and piety, all of us. May Allah, we are all brothers and sisters. We're, we, we have the same struggles. And trust me, we're in the same ship. And that's why we're talking to each other today on a similar level by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go back to that verse. 
So Allah Almighty says, we're going to test you. And we spoke about loss and we spoke about loss of life, loss of wealth, loss of produce. We spoke a little bit about loss of produce. Allah mentions it specifically because produce is connected to that which you're farming. Perhaps it may be there one year, it may not be there one year, but if you're not a farmer, you will still be affected by loss of so many food items or whatever it may be in terms of what you sow seeds of that grow. Allah says it might not grow. People were asking me, what about crypto? I say, crypto, you know, you might lose, you might lose. I can't come and tell you halal, haram and all of that because, uh, you know, there may be scope of permissibility, but in reality is if you're not intelligent enough, you're going to lose. Stay away from it, man. Unless you know what you're doing. May Allah Almighty protect us. The point is you may lose and you may lose a lot. If you've lost a lot and there's no way of getting things back. Do you know what my brothers and sisters? You have to take it in your stride. You have to just make the most of what you now have and get up again and start doing things. Don't lose hope. In a short time, you will be in a better place than you were. I've witnessed this time and again. And then guess what Allah says? And this was the point I said I'm going to mention. Give good news to those who bear sabr, bear patience. Those who bear patience, give them good news. Who are they? Those who bear patience are those whom when calamity strikes them, when calamity strikes them, they say, well, we all belong to Allah anyway, and we are going to return to him again anyway. Subhanallah. Allah gave me what he gave me. It was his. He took it back. It's okay. He will give it back to me and he will give me more than that. He's the owner of it before it came to me. And he was the owner of it while it was with me. And he is the current owner of it, even though it's gone away from me. That's a believer. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Subhanallah. And then Allah Almighty tells us that those whom when calamity strikes them, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We all belong to Allah. We're all going to return to Allah. Everything belongs to Allah. Everything is going to return to Allah. Allah says, Ulaika alayhim salawatum min rabbihim wa rahma. For those people, goodness from Allah, goodness from Allah, and the mercy of Allah descends upon them. And those are the ones who are successful, who are rightly guided. Who are they? They are the ones whom they realize and understand. Listen, I've enrolled into this examination, so I'm going to be tested. And that's why in the Quran, Allah says something very clearly. And what is it? Allah says, those who don't believe when we've given them, don't let it deceive you. Giving or not giving is not necessarily a sign of our contentment and happiness. We've given people whom we've disliked. And we've kept away things from people whom we've loved. But a winner is the one who passes the examination. When Allah gives you, he expects you to humble and to get closer to him. And I've noticed people, and I'm sure we all have, of all different types. Some people, when Allah blesses them with million and then a 10 million and a 100 million, you find them at the mosque much more. And they're so humble. And a guy has to nudge you to say, this guy here is actually a multi-millionaire. Did you see the, the color and outside belongs to this man? And you're looking at him crying in the first self. I've seen people like that. Crying in the first self. I've seen people like that in Nigeria. This guy crying here, you know, the private jet we came in was his. Wallahi, wallahi, I've seen people like this in Nigeria. How's that? And the reason why I single out Nigeria is people think, oh, these guys might be this might be that. Wallahi, you will be amazed if only but you knew what went on, the good things that went on. You know, in this world, bad news flies fast. Talk about Mufti Menk, for example, someone says one bad thing, the whole world knows about it. But they'll ignore the good you've done for the last 30 years. Why? Because that's between you and Allah. It's Allah's way of doing things. What can we do? It's man. It's okay. Leave it. Ignore. If they think you're bad, it's okay. So for as long as Allah knows you're good. Don't try and impress them. Impress Allah. So Allah Almighty is telling us that the test is when we give you humble yourself. I told you some people when they're given, they come close to Allah. They thank Allah. They don't know how to thank Allah. That's why they are so happy, so delighted. They help people. They are charitable. They give and give. And Allah says, Unfik, ya Adam, unfik alayk. O son of Adam, 
spend and I will spend on you. You want, give others, I'll give you. How's that? But we don't believe that sometimes. I've got my few pounds in my pocket right now. Guess what? I'm going to hold on to them because if I lose them, the minute you see a cause that needs more than what you need, follow the example of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Try to give them even a little droplet of what you have and watch what Allah does for you. Every single time I've given something without fail, I've gotten more than that. I'm talking of me and I'm sure all of you, you probably have seen that. And please don't be ridiculous by giving everything away because the Quran warns you about that too. You say, listen, today we heard give away and it'll be multiplied. I got 10 grand in my account. Just give the 10 grand away. Let's see what happens. <laughs> you might spend another two years without any money because you are a little bit foolish. Allah says your basic needs, keep it, give something, give extra. Give. You may want to give a little bit more. Sometimes you might want to take a bit of a, a risk in inverted commas, but Alhamdulillah, let it go. It's okay, fine. We have Abdullah aid with us today, for example, raising money for those who require dialysis from the Syrian refugees in the desert of Jordan. And subhanallah, guess what? Yes, the cause is open. I'm sure they would have their, their, their little uh, card machines and tins and everything as you're exiting. A few pounds won't do you harm, inshallah. You know what? It will help you. It will open your doors. I've seen people who don't know other people Yet they're making dua for them because those people facilitated for them some medical attention and you didn't even know them. If you were to swipe a card and say, look, I'd like to help with the dialysis. Do you really think the guys getting the dialysis know your name and surname, date of birth and how much you weigh? They don't. But they make dua for you. Oh Allah, whoever made this possible for me. Bless them, grant them goodness, give them barakah in their lives, in their spouses, in their children, in their family members, in their health, in their wealth, in whatever, in their deen, in their dunya, in their akhirah, and they are crying tears. And you're busy sitting in Keithley enjoying a beautiful munch somewhere down the road, mashallah. And you don't even realize you actually are happy today and content. And you actually have succeeded to this level because some widow somewhere in the desert has been making dua for you without her knowing you or you knowing her. But Allah knows both of you. Wallahi, I've seen it happening myself. So that's why Allah says, when we've given you, do something with it. You, the aim, like I said at the beginning of the talk, is to get paradise. That's what I want. This life is short. I could drop dead here and now. And so could you. And I'm not saying it in a depressive way. I'm saying it, that's a reality. I need to ask myself, what have you done to prepare for that day? Well, I can tell you what I've done. I seek the forgiveness of Allah every day as many times as I can. Oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings. I love you and I know that you love me too. And oh Allah, I know for a fact that I'm trying my best. I am a human. I have faulted. I've committed sin, not because I defy you, but I'm a human. My human weakness. I love you so much. I want you to forgive me and grant me paradise. Do you know what? When you die, do you really think those words would have gone wasted if you were genuine about them? Wallahi, every time you say it, it's, it's said there and it's written by the angels and Allah sees it and knows it. And when you get there and you see, oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive me. Even the day you died in the morning, you started the morning with a prayer with your Fajr. And then what happened you, you repeat it so many times. Oh Allah, forgive me, grant me paradise and so on. That day you said it. Do you really think Allah's not going to give you paradise? Come on, come on. We have hope in the mercy of Allah. Not the hope that leads you to sin, but the hope that leads you to improve yourself, even if you've fallen into sin difference between the two. And then we know of people whom Allah took away from and it drifted them away from Allah. Some people are like that. And we also know of the other side where Allah's taken away from people and it brought them closer to Allah. And that's the majority of us believers. When Allah takes something away from you and you come closer to him, it's a sign of his love. So anything that drifts you away from Allah is worrisome. It's something you should be worried about. And anything that brings you closer to Allah is a good thing. It's a sign of the love of Allah, even if it was negative according to the world. May Allah Almighty grant us goodness and ease and open our doors. And may Allah Almighty help us to help others. And I pray that the few words I've said today would actually help us put things into perspective regarding who we are as mu'mineen. And at the same time, how we should be working and looking into the negatives that happen in our lives and how we help others. Allah will help you. And inshallah, I pray that we can solidify the bonds of our own family members and our community, and we can spread the love and the goodness of the deen of Allah. 
let's learn this and let's try and do it and let's try and be genuine towards one another and you will notice the doors of Jannah being flung open and the gatekeepers of Jannah greeting you with Salamun alaykum tibtum fadkhuluha khalidin Peace be upon you. You've done very, very well in your examination, right? You've done very well. So enter forever. Go and enjoy. And inshallah, if we don't get a chance to meet here and spend a few moments, inshallah, with one another, by the will of Allah, we meet in the companionship of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hereafter. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina.